next year for Lucy's fourth birthday. And I want to be able to take her to Disney and not have to tell her no. Like I want to stay on the resort. I want to do everything. If she wants an $800 Cinderella dress, I want to be like, we're buying that $800 Cinderella dress, which I hope that doesn't happen. But, um, like that's our family goal. We want no nos, eat anywhere she wants to eat, do whatever she wants to do. And, um, we're going to take my parents and my brother and sister with us. So like, that's our big family goal. And then we have another big goal to pay off our Jeep. Um, so we factored in like how many hours I need to work Beachbody, how Brett can't get irritated with me if, you know, I'm doing Beachbody stuff because that's going to take away from our ultimate family goal next year and, you know, paying off our Jeep and how many hours I can work and how many team calls I can do and really divided out my time. So with that being said, um, what I didn't do when I first started coaching, which is what I wish I would have done, was track my income. So I, I put a spreadsheet in the – you're going to have to wait a second. Or you're going to get in trouble. Um, I put an income spreadsheet in the Team Lift Fit files. It's an Excel spreadsheet. It's super um, simple, so you, I'm not like an Excel master by any means. So um, you can change it. But you, ha I have in there like what I pay out in business fees, um, what I buy like Shakeology and my other supplements and things like that to keep my business going, to keep Brett active, to keep me active. How much I make residual, which is team bonuses, which is you know what I need to make to ultimately pay the Jeep off and save for the Disney trip, and then how much I make commission wise. And then um, I factor that in every single month so I can see what I'm doing because um, a lot of the coaches who weren't doing this, who are doing this, didn't even realize like they really weren't even making any money. Um, so if you don't track it, you don't know. And then you can see yourself like since I've been tracking it and keeping track of my goals, like, okay, I need to sell this many challenge packs to earn this much retail which will help me sign this many coaches because I always aim to sign three to five coaches a month to help build my residual income. Um, so I write it out in lists. Like I need to sell this much um, challenge packs, this much extra product. So I always try to do an upsell of like E and E the performance pack. Um, Activate is a huge one that I like to sell. How many individual programs I want to sell. Um, I, I have it broken down pretty my goal is pretty specific to how, what, how much I need to earn. So um, then every month I go through and then I go back through my commissions and I list how everything went and then I start writing, marking off my goals. And then now I set weekly goals like, okay, I need to earn this much a week to be able to earn this much a month for it to be this much a year. And I kid you not, my income has grown $300 a month since I've started doing this. Since I've had very. I will go get you milk in a second. Stop. Um, yeah, play, with, play with Belle and then I'll go get your milk. Just hold on a second. Um, so being very specific about it and having a clear target is what's going to help you get through those tough times. So we all have tough times. I have a tough time probably every other day of like, why am I doing this? Why am I here? Blah, blah, blah. So you have to plug into your personal development and not feel sorry for yourself and put your big girl pants on, which is what I had to say today in a message. You know, everyone's going to have a bad day and everyone's going to have a bad weekend. But if you have a direct plan, you can just pick yourself back up because I didn't hit my goal last month of coaches signed. I only hit one, but I had the other girl from the sneak peek. Um, she signed up today and then I have another girl signing up next week for sure. And then, um, there's a girl that both um, Brittany and I have been working with. So she's going to sign up under Brittany next week. So I didn't have my own personal goal last month, but I'm going to be hitting um, it this month. So that's why you just can't get down because if you keep plugging away, you keep following up and you stay on track with your goals, it's definitely going to happen. But I kid you not, my income has raised $300 a month since May. 
just from keeping track of everything and knowing where I'm at. So I know that if I stay focused, I can make it happen. And so that's why we need to really focus on the team, like team goals of like how many new team members do we want this month for Team Lift Fit? Um, because that's what's going to make us strong at the end of the day with everyone's big financial goals. Um, if we're not adding coaches, we're not growing in numbers. So good job to Christine. She signed up her coach today. So she's only five coaches away from Diamond. That is not that far away. Hi. Hi. <laughs> um, so that is how I track my income goals and it's really, it's really paying off. So I don't know if anybody needs help with it or needs some more direction on how to do that. Just shoot me a message and we can hop on the phone or do a zoom chat. We can pull up your spreadsheet and look at all of it. <clears throat> and then I had posted in the group page not too long ago about um, putting, is it putting the cart before the horse? Is that how you say it? Forget. Yeah. The horse. So I used to have this big mistake too of like, I have to have all this content and I have to do all of this and all of this has to be planned out before I even have anybody that's going to join me. That is the dumbest idea ever. So what I've been doing now, like I didn't even have my boot camp prepared for September until today. I had to like bust out a bunch of um, workouts today, but until I had 10 people committed and I had 10 people purchase, I wasn't going to put it together a new boot camp. So I waited until today and boot camp starts Thursday. So put some feelers out there before you start making all of this crazy content. If there's no reason to waste your time, if you don't have anybody that's going to join you. So definitely keep that in mind, like, especially for like eat clean groups and stuff like that. Or if you're going to do a free group, don't waste your time putting it together until you have people committed and people that are not just going to use you people that are going to invest in your business later on down the road. So do it. You know, that'll put a little pressure on you to make sure you get it done too. Does anybody have anything they want to talk about or like goals or anything or questions about social media? I know we haven't had a team call in a while, but I really just wanted to talk about the income spreadsheet and building the team. And then next week, we have to start um, advertising for the next sneak peek. So really make sure you get your lead generators going and planned out for next week. I noticed since tracking, I kind of loosely tracked June. We were moving. I kind of loosely started really more structurally tracking my income in July. And then I really tracked my income in August. And I was bummed I didn't hit my income goals. But I'll tell you what, I got a hell of a lot further ahead than I had before when I wasn't tracking. And I didn't realize just how piddly I was with my income until I sat down and really took a hard look at it. And since then, I have just been like, I got to do whatever I got to do. And I will tell you what, having it in front of you is painful, but it is eye-opening. And if you want it, it's going to be the motivation you need to get off your butt and make sure it happens. I agree. Also, um, planning out like your content that I started doing in May also, and it's been a huge help for me. So like we took some pictures over the weekend of like me and Brett and the kids and then like a couple pictures of Brett and I, and like, um, there's a picture of me, uh, laying on the couch sleeping that I wasn't too fond of Brett for taking when he first took it of uh, me and Rush and Lucy when we first came home from the hospital like an hour fresh um, of our first day home with two kids and I'm that's going to be like my big uh, content picture for like that was such a good moment for me to not have to stress that in six weeks I was going to have to leave Rush and Lucy and take them to a daycare. So that's going to be like my lead generator for joining um, the sneak peek for moms. Like that's going to be my hook, line, and sinker for moms. Like I was such, even though I was like so exhausted from just giving birth like the day before and, you know, coming home to a toddler and then, you know, of course we're like working on our basement the same day we come home from the hospital because like, we're just crazy like that. But it was so nice to be able to sit on the couch and relax and not have to stress. And it didn't matter because I didn't have to go back to work. So we could take our time and rest and recover and enjoy family life. So that's like a huge content um, post. 
I took um, Brett for his birthday Sunday, and we I, I got him like a man's Mom, facial and a straight Mom, raise, Mom, straight razor Mom. shave, and like Mom. it was like an hour, and we went by Mom. ourselves. I made that cake. Oh really? Oh, and Lucy made her dad a cake, and um, I told him. Mom, I made me cake. Yep. And, and, yep. And then um, we went to this like super amazing winery and I paid for all of it with Beachbody and it just felt really good that I could spend $500 on my husband for his birthday because he always gets me outlandish gifts and I never have any money to do it for him. So it was a really good weekend and we got dressed up on a Sunday, even though it was like a lunch date because <laughs> we're old. Um, it was still super fun. So that's like a content for like joining, you know, that that's how Be Beachbody's benefited me. I didn't have to be the lame wife using my husband's money with the crappy gift again. Like this is my first real gift and I was really proud of it. And um, so that's like a content picture for joining the team. And that's how you kind of have to plan it out. Like when you're going off of a, on a whim, I've noticed it just doesn't, it doesn't have that same effect. So I quit like, Oh my gosh, let's take this picture and I have to post it right now to like, now I just collect pictures and then that's my content. And then in my notes section, I go ahead and write out my posts. You can copy and paste if you have an iPhone to your notes section, the picture. And then all I do is just copy and paste that to Facebook and Instagram. Like it all just flows so easy. And somebody had said something about always feeling like maybe they're, a broken record and it's totally not the case especially if you look at your insights if you're only getting if you have for instance I have 1200 friends on Facebook and I had an insight of 123 people the other day I posted that post four more times and it ended up equaling 900 people after four times of posting it so look at your insights before you like the same people aren't gonna see it again which brings me to my next point about that audience of 21 times, I went back through and counted how many times I advertised for my boot camp. Today will be the 25th time, but it actually took me to 22 times before I ended up getting 10 people to commit. And it took until yesterday for my inbox to be filled. And then I sold two challenge packs and some boot camps. It literally takes that many invites. Like uh, somebody asked me the other day, um, no one's addressing their challenge group. And I went through their page and they only had one invite one time a day. And she had like a really cute breakfast post. And I was like, oh my gosh, there's an invite. Like if you want more breakfast ideas, drop your email below for my next boot camp or whatever you want to call it. I would refrain from saying challenge group. When I stopped using the word challenge group was when I got more interest. I, for one, I think challenge frightens people. And two, I don't, they, I don't think they know what that means. Like I wouldn't know what that means. And just because we're Beachbody people and our news feeds are flooded with Beachbody people doesn't mean everyone's is. So um, I would try to come up with like a unique name for your group, like whatever you want to call it. You can call it a boot camp or whatever, whatever you want to say it. Mom, um, Mom, but pee. You got to pee? Okay, go pee. Uh, so those were just some things that I had that I wanted to tell everybody. I've even started recycling the same post with a different picture and I do the same thing I'll take a couple different photos like without throughout one day or one weekend and then I'll kind of post them throughout the week and then I'll go through and I'll just change the picture but I keep the same join my um, muscle Barbie boot camp or my Pio princess boot camp I, and I just recycle it you can use the same picture too like I use the same um, picture all the time yeah. Oh. Sorry. I also found that once I stopped, um, I'm an overthinker. I am. I am so um, guilty of overthinking. Like I, like I would sit down and be like, okay, I have to get all of this done, and then I'd spend like two hours at the computer, and I got nothing done because I was so overthinking things. And I have found if I just do a massive brain dump and then based off that can create my monthly, my yearly, my weekly, my daily goal, depending on what your things are, every night before I go to bed, I write out a post-it 
of what I'm going to do for my family, myself, and my business the next morning. Every night I write out a post-it. So that the next day that checklist is done. It's made. I get my workout out of the way. I cook my family dinner. We spend some family time. I got my post done. Cool. The next day I'm going to do this and this and this and this and this. And I will make my posts and either schedule them or at least have the picture and the post created. So that, like today, all I had to do was pop up my pictures and I'm good to go. Got my workout in. No problem. So I've, I've thought uh, that helps too. Don't overthink it. It's the simple things. I went back and looked at my 50 influencers and it wasn't the posts that were all like when they're all made up and you can tell that they've done this huge spiel that made me follow them. It's the ones when they're out at Target and one kid's running the muck and the other one looks like they're going to fall out of the cart and she's holding the eggs, not knowing where to go. That to me is real. That's what I follow. Don't overthink it. Keep it simple. I agree. Definitely don't overthink it. Um, but it's easy to do. It's, it's easy to do. I had to turn off my notifications too. Um, I noticed I was like not being engaged with the kids or being engaged with Brett or just like putting like balancing my checkbook off because I'm too busy like mm -hmm. looking at the phone and all that. So I turned off Messenger, I turned off Facebook, I turned off Instagram, and I can't even tell you I feel like a whole new woman. Like I check everything three times a day. Um, my clients know I check everything three times a day. I let them know like, hey, I'll post at seven, I'll check in at nine, I'll check in at two, and then I get to check in at uh, nine o'clock again at night. So these are when you can expect to hear from me. Um, please, I, I, I have all my clients send me emails, so then that way I can go through and flag and star like what is important that I need to get back to versus having a crap ton of Facebook. Um, you know, since I turned off my notifications, sometimes I'll pop in and I've got 75 notifications from groups and people tagging me, and there's just no way to keep it all organized. So for my clients, I really have them email me. So they are my number one priority when it comes to getting things answered. And like, obviously in my coach group too. So who has big goals for the sneak peek? And I'm saying if you didn't hit Success Club 5 last month, you better be hitting Success Club 5 this month because Pio's on sale for 140 21-day fix is $160. Um, three people, it only takes three people, go out there, invite, invite through your posts if you don't want to, like, inbox people. Um, um, but how many people is everybody going to invite to the sneak peek? Let's go through it. Megan, how many people are you going to invite? At least two. I'm going to shoot for more like three or four. You're going to, what's your target for a sign up? Two. Because I have a couple, well, let me get back to you on that one, because when I posted the recording from last week, I got a lot of traction. So let me go back and actually message those people. And let me try and let me see. I, my goal would be to get five. That's a great. That would be my goal, because I'd rather aim high than not enough. So I would aim for five. My goal is to invite five, get three to sign up from the sneak peek and to get five coaches total this month, um, two of them from my boot camp, I'm trying to convert to um, discount Shakeology customers this week. Um, Christine, what about you? Um, my goal is three, hoping for one. That's good. Heather? My goal is five, hoping for two or three. Um, now that my husband's gonna be doing it, I need to step up my game, so. <laughs> Yeah, you can't have um, no, not at all. Not at all. What about you, Heidi? Um, I really don't have any prospects right now, so I'm just working on building on that and getting some people. That's where you got to really work on those posts. 
Yeah, I was doing really good. And then this week with the holiday and getting ready for my daughter's birthday and it all went. I know, the holiday. to crap. I felt like I was doing really well. And I was posting like the same thing about like my busy mom, like back to basics group and stuff. And I felt like I was starting to get some good. And then I just got overwhelmed with everything else going on in life. And so I'm going to try and pick it back up and try to keep building on that. So. Jill? Um, my goal is three and hopefully um, sign up at least two of them. What about you, Andrea? Um, my goal is to invite 10 people. I have several people on, on Instagram that I'm following and really trying to communicate with. And then um, I'm hoping that I can get at least three to four people in the sneak peek. Oh, good. Oh, yeah. I wanted to tell you guys too, before we get off here. Um, so we've been talking a lot about like influencers and writing down like influencers and stuff. Well, I've also been when people um, like, like my post or whatever, I'll like click on their, click on them and then go to their profile and kind of scan their profile, see if they interest me. Well, there was this woman who really interests me and I seen she had like a YouTube link and then I went to her YouTube and her YouTubes are super professional. And I thought, well, that's strange. Like I wonder like what she does and she's not really a vlogger. She just does like um, tutorials on like busy moms and like what life's like actually like with a newborn and like funny little clips and stuff like that. Kind of like the loves commercial of like what it looks like when you have one kid and you're like trying to put the cover over you and, trying to like change the diapers discreetly and then you know you get two kids and everything's just like easy peasy and uh, her videos are kind of like that and uh, so anyways I started skimming through her Instagram page and I started liking a bunch of her pictures and then I followed her and then I put on her picture on one, under one of her YouTube clicks I put oh my gosh I love your YouTube channel channel I'm definitely subscribing so then she follows me back well, then I keep like looking at her stuff because she really interests me and she works out and uh, she does like online um, workouts through Tone It Up or whatever. And so I, I asked her, I said, do you do like YouTube trainings? Like how much do your trainings cost? She was like, oh my gosh, I don't do any trainings. I would totally like give you some help for free. So I am, that's how I'm connecting with her. I haven't brought anything up about Beachbody, but obviously she starts following my fitness stuff and she's like, just had a baby also. I think our, our babies are just like a couple weeks apart. So that's how you connect with your influencers. So I'm going to get her to do like a guest team call on like how to organize your Instagram or your YouTube, like how she makes her super cool videos and her lighting and stuff like that. Cause she works a full-time job. Plus she does this whole YouTube get up and that's how you find influencers because she already has social media. She already gets what she's trying to do. She's clearly trying to make money with YouTube. She just doesn't know how. So I'm totally going to teach her how to make money on social media because she could make an ebook and sell it. And then hopefully get her, start talking to her about residual income. She loves fitness. Why not be a fitness enthusiast and be a part of team lift fit and share knowledge with others while building your YouTube with your ebook and selling it and bam, all you need is one rock star and you are a five star elite diamond. So there's my one influencer. I'm going to get her. It's just going to, it just takes time. You know what I mean? I've been talking to her for like a month. So that's what you just got to realize when you're like setting yourself up is it takes time and doesn't happen overnight. But that's just an example of influencers. You know, I, I like have like crazy people like Natalie Bill Fit on my list, but obviously Natalie Bill Fit's on my team. So, so I have a question. Or maybe quick. Oh, go ahead. I couldn't. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Um, I, right now, I think I just got another four, but I think I have close to 37 people in my workshop for meal prep and meal planning. Uh -huh. And um, I just really, I want to get those people converted. And I, I think that's what I'm struggling. Thank you, buddy. I'm struggling with converting from like the free to the, you know, wanting to pay and get in the challenge pack. Like, what do you say? How do I get those people? Well, what I do is 
okay, so I'm coming to the end of my boot camp and I have a couple people who didn't buy a challenge pack. So this week is all like wrap up, like where do you go from here? What to expect? So I did a big video today, not a big video, like a two minute video on what you can expect from me from here. So in your meal prep, at the end of your week, you would say, this is where you can go from here. To work with me further, you, um, you have the option to join me through a Beachbody program and Shakeology. You can get an incredible program and a shake for busy moms and busy women for $140. And that will get you in on another boot camp for free. And, or you can sign up as a discount member. And as long as you're drinking Shakeology every month, you will be have access to every single one of my boot camps every month or the team live fit team challenge group. Or if you're interested in um, clean eating and healthy recipes and you want to start sharing this with others and you're a huge fitness enthusiast, I highly recommend you joining our sneak peek for five days. It's no obligations, just a couple videos and short posts and a live webinar on Wednesday night. And it might be a good fit for you and you can make some extra money for um, your family. But those are just some ways that you can join me after this group is over. And then once that group's over, if they didn't join me from the future, they are done. I don't work with them anymore. I am. Um, that's, that's definitely where I want to start taking this because I feel like like I've got traction now. I just really want to make it work. Whereas right now I just feel like people are enjoying using my free content and uh, I'm, I'm okay with that. And like my, my big group where people just, you know, it's like the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday posts, but I really want to start converting people. So this is recording. Yeah. Cause I need to rewatch what you just said like five different times. Yeah, this is recorded, and then also, I get them on a video chat. So at the end of the week, I say, like, here's the schedule, let's schedule a video chat. We either do Zoom or Google Hangout or um, FaceTime, and I get face-to-face -face with them for 15 or 20 minutes and lock them in. If I put that in just a written video text, I'm probably not going to get anything. But then I just say, okay, let's go ahead and schedule your in consultation for the boot camp this week. And I private message them. I basically make them get on their call with me. Can you take what you just said, that whole spiel? Can you put that? Can you just type it in a basic document? Because I'm not at home where I couldn't write it down. I'm still in the car, actually yeah. out running errands. Yeah. That would be awesome. Yeah. I will um, do it in the morning because um, these kids are driving me crazy. Uh, but yeah, I'll write it out. But that's how, that's how I get them from, like, I hit success club four already from last, like last time, you know, like I just keep, I just keep filtering them through. So does anybody have any other questions? We only have like a couple minutes left. Could he be any cuter? Seriously? Oh my God. He's such a monster. He's getting so big. I know, he's like 15 pounds. He's huge. He has man boobs. My daughter is 15 months and she is 19 pounds. Yeah, he's huge. <laughs> <laughs> he is, we should call him Tank instead of Rush because <laughs> he is a tank. Yeah, but he's Where's a boy and boys are always bigger. Yeah. Yeah, my son was bigger too. My son was really big. He's not anymore, but he was too. Lucy weighs 40 pounds and she's two. Well, she'll be three in two weeks, but she weighs 40 pounds. Kieran is, Kieran just turned three and he's 27 pounds or something. Yeah, I have giant kids. I have little. Where did you get the name Rush? We um, met this like financial like person like years ago and he's like super big and masculine and super successful and I was like, that's what I want my son to be like, super successful and plus we thought it would be like a really hot football player name like Rush Landis on the tackle. <laughs> that's cute. That's terrible. That's cute. That's really cute. Okay, all right. I have to go because I have to be summoned for getting milk and for my kids want to go to bed. <laughs> Good night, Lucy. Bye -bye. Good night.
Bye, cutie pie. Thanks for letting us borrow mommy. All right, I will put that in documents. If anybody has any questions, let me know and we will get them answered. Sounds good. Thank you. Bye.